He's the King of kings who loves me. I know Jesus, the ruler over my heart and Prince of Peace. He is my master. He's my savior, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's the one who calls me friend. Come on, let's raise our voices and let's give praise to the Lord. Give him a hand clap tonight and praise him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Ray. It is good to praise the Lord. Amen. It's great to be in the presence of the living God. And we've come to a time now that we've been waiting for with great anticipation. It's time to receive, to hear and receive the Word of God. Are you ready now to hear the Word of God? Come on, just wave your hand and give me a big smile if you're ready for the Word of God. That's wonderful. And I'm excited tonight because I know that God's servant has a special word from God for this gathering right now. And you will not be disappointed as you open your heart and spirit and listen to God's word. Evangelist Reinhard Bonke is a man that has God called many years ago to preach the gospel. And he has done that unfailingly and with a tremendous energy and commitment across the world in all sorts of situations to many different nations and tribes of people and many millions of folk have responded to the message of the good news and we are ready to receive that message of good news tonight from him will you join me now in giving a warm welcome to evangelist reinhard bonkai let's re welcome him god bless you hallelujah praise be to god praise be to god what a wonderful evening we thank God for this wonderful weather. Amen. This is gospel campaign weather at its best. And Jesus knows what he is doing. Praise God. Well, the Lord is here to do mighty things. I've been praying for many hours today. And I know in my spirit that Jesus is here to do many glorious things and mighty works how many of you believe that and know that amen well first of all I want to just preach the gospel short and sharp and to the point then we pray the prayer of salvation for those who want to receive salvation through Jesus Christ and after that we're going to pray for the sick because Jesus will not bypass the sick this is part of the Word of God we believe it and he still answers prayer amen we expect miracles to happen here tonight hallelujah okay okay now before i read my scripture let me just say this jesus did not die this cruel death on the cross to provide bishops and pastors and evangelists a career Jesus died on the cross to seek and to save the lost hallelujah this is the focus of Calvary Jesus Christ has come to seek and to save the lost as you can read right here in front and Jesus is here to do this right now Jesus didn't come to save religion Jesus came to save people and he will save people here right now so open your heart for the saving power of Jesus and you're going to leave Perry Park a new creature I want to read from John chapter 4 you know the whole day the story of this the woman at the well has been uh, what shall I say has been very much alive in my heart I just want to read a couple of verses before I come to the actual point that is on my heart John chapter 4 let me read us from verse 15 Jesus met that woman 
the disciples had gone to Sychar, and Jesus was there meeting that woman alone. And a very interesting conversation developed, and a mighty miracle began to take place. Let me just read a couple of verses. The woman said to Jesus, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands. And the one you have now, and the one whom you now have, is not your husband either, in that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped, and then she began to talk about some other religious issues. And then, verse 27, and at this point, his disciples came and they marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no one said, what do you seek or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city and said to the men, come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him and so on praise be to god let me just briefly briefly give the background of this story this woman met jesus she didn't know who jesus was jesus was a complete stranger to this woman and then a conversation developed, as we just read. And that woman actually was a great debater. She knew how to debate religious issues. People today know how to debate religious issues. I meet them all the time. And maybe here are people who are great debaters when it comes to religious issues. And you know, this woman, I think Jesus must have known it. This woman, well, religious issues were her special hobby, I suppose. Because she knew the subject inside out. She was absolutely excellent. People put up smoke screens questions and arguments about religion just to hide their deep inner needs they come with arguments how often do you hear that question and that argument why does god allow so much suffering in this world as somebody said you could just as well go and ask the minister of transport why he allows accidents on Britain's roads. If you ask the minister of transport that question, he will take exception to that question. He will say, well, do you imply that I am responsible for all the accidents on Britain's roads? He will point to a book of traffic laws and he will say every time a law is broken an accident may happen and that may result in terrible suffering. I'll tell you why this world is suffering first and foremost because people ignore the book of God. And because people ignore the word of God, that's why so many things go wrong. When God says, thou shalt not commit adultery. When he says, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. He doesn't do it to, to spoil our, our fun. 
but he says it because he knows how he created us. And he knows if we do things opposite to his word, something breaks within our psyche. And that is very, very often the cause of so much suffering. A youngster came and he said, that is another argument, religious argument, maybe. He said, I'm 17 years of age. He said, you preach the gospel from a book that is 2,000 years old. I don't like that, you know. I want to be modern. This is a dusty old book. I don't want to live by a book that is so ancient. It's 2,000 years old and I'm 17. Well, just a little piece of advice. Just look to the sun. The sun is much older than 2,000 years. I've never heard anybody say, I am cold because the sun is old. And you surely also not. I tell you, the sun is old but active. And the Bible is old but powerful. Hallelujah. The word of God is the power of God unto salvation for everyone that believes. Amen. Oh, all these flimsy arguments. All these religious arguments, they are so useless, so useless. Some people in, in Germany, I don't know whether you've got people asking questions like these here, but in Germany, I hear, many times I hear this, this argument, this question. They say, well, if God, if your God is almighty, one chap said, if your God is almighty, then let him create a square circle. As if a square circle would save the world. Well, I tell you, my God specializes in impossibilities, but not in absurdities. Say amen. amen. What is impossible with man, that is possible with God. But God does not specialize to satisfy the absurdities of humanity. Amen. An evangelist colleague, he said he once was asked that question. A group of men, young men, he said, waited for him and they said, Hey, preacher, if your God is almighty, let him create a square circle and the evangelist said tell me young man is that the question over which you cannot sleep at night the young man said no what do you mean the evangelist said you know what i mean is this you know i'm so busy that I can no more answer all the questions. I can only answer questions over which people can no more sleep at night. Have you maybe a question that you cannot sleep over at night? That young man said, yeah, I got a question. I didn't sleep last night because I pushed my girlfriend to an abortion. I can't sleep over this at night. He said, the evangelist said, all right, let's talk about this question. Amen. And I tell you, there's power in the blood of Jesus to wash away all our sins and to break every chain and set people free. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So this woman, she came with all sorts of religious questions. You know, just surface questions, just surface questions. I sometimes think of the human heart as a, of a big reservoir. And I'll tell you what religion does to this lake, this reservoir. 
It just comes with a gentle breeze that sweeps over the surface of this reservoir and and just caresses the surface. You know, that's what people like. One lady said to me, Mr. Bonka, I don't like your preaching. I only get religious feelings when I hear the big pipe organ played. You know, that is uh, the surface, uh, uh, that is the surface Christianity. That's just caressing the soul a little bit. One gets religious feelings. Well, I have got good news for you. Jesus is not a religionist. I say again, Jesus didn't come to save religion. Jesus came for a completely different purpose. Jesus is not a religionist. Jesus is the savior of mankind. Jesus is the son of the living God. Hallelujah. He came to destroy the works of the devil. He came as a man of war. To destroy the works of the evil one. Amen. I'll tell you one other thing. And this is what the Holy Spirit showed me. Jesus is not interested to treat just the surface. I mean the surface coming with some lipsticks and giving you a new makeup. He's not treating the surface. I'll tell you what Jesus is doing. And this is this, what the scripture what the scripture demonstrates. Let me read it to you. Let me read it to you. The moment that woman said, oh, I would like of that living water. This is what he replied. Jesus said, go and call your husband, lady, and then come back. I'm waiting here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. She was honest. Jesus said, you have, you have well said, I have no husband, because you have had five men. The, the German Bible says, you have five men, not five husbands, five men. And the man with whom you live now is also not your husband. That moment, this woman woke up. This is not a preacher as I know. This is not somebody who just celebrates religion. This is somebody else, this Jesus. I think she may not have said it, but she must have thought it. Wow, hey, you stranger, this is not Holy Communion. You are touching more than the surface. You know when Jesus pinpointed the sin of that woman, do you know what he did? He didn't caress the surface. He pulled the plug out at the bottom. That reservoir. You know Jesus doesn't just see the top. He is the son of God. And he sees our deepest needs. He sees our deepest problems. He sees our fears. And he knows about our tears. He knows about all the the, 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 the hidden, the hidden chains that are binding mankind. He sees it all and he pulls the plug and he says, Lady, your life is not clean. Your life is not right. I have come to give you living water. I've come to give you salvation. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I tell you why Jesus pulled the plug. He pulled the plug and bared the sin of that woman just on a one-to-one -one basis. Not to accuse her, not to shame her. He pulled the plug so that he, Jesus, would have a chance to drain all the sludge of her life, all the poison, all the filth, all the unrighteousness, all the evil lusts had to be drained from the bottom. Amen. And Jesus is still the same today. Hallelujah. 
Jesus is still the same today. I tell you one thing, whoever, whoever you are here this evening, Jesus is here to pull the pluck to pull the pluck of your life and to drain all those evils from your life, to set you free from them. Jesus is here to save. Jesus is here to save the lost. Say amen. I'll never forget this for as long as I live. One day I was challenged by a highly educated man and he said to me I don't like the way you preach and I don't like the way you you yeah he said I don't like the way you preach he said I'm also a spiritual counselor I said now well if you don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God if you don't believe that the Bible is the Word of God and you are a spiritual counselor I'm interested to know how do you counsel people I said let me draw a picture here comes a couple whose whose marriage is on the rocks and they need counseling and they come to you with bleeding heart. I said, how do you counsel them? Here they come with bleeding heart. You counsel them and then they walk home with bleeding hearts. Oh no, he said. With great superiority in his voice. Oh no, he said. I just calm them down. He said, I calm them down. I calm them down. And when he kept on repeating, I calm them down, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I said to him, Mister, a man on a sinking ship needs more than a tranquilizer. Amen. Don't calm him down because he is going down already. I tell you what Jesus is doing when he sees somebody on a shipwreck on a sinking ship. He passes by and he sees him. He sees her in their great need. And he sees their bleeding hearts and their broken hearts and their broken family and their broken home. What does Jesus do? He stretches out his nail pierced hand. He does not throw them a tranquilizer and say, hello, perish in peace. He reaches down with his nail pierced hand. He grips him or her, lifts him or her and looks into their eyes and says, I live and you shall live also. That is Jesus. That is the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. This woman came from religion to Jesus. Christianity is not a religion. Jesus is not a religion. Jesus is the savior of mankind. He is alive. He is here and he is ready to save and to lift you from that sinking boat of yours. Hallelujah. Jesus is the only Savior. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Jesus is the only Savior. Jesus is the only Savior. I believe this with all my heart. There's another nonsensical talk in Germany. You hear it now and again, here and there. Some people say, I know that two times two equals four. But when it comes to Christianity, I cannot know it. I can only believe. Well, I've got good news for you. The whole test, New Testament rings with confidence. I know also that two times two equals four. But I know much, much more that my Redeemer liveth. 
It is true that three times three equals nine, but I know that I know that I know Jesus saves from the uttermost to the uttermost. Hallelujah. Amen. Only Jesus saves. I feel I must emphasize that point once more. Most of the time I'm preaching in Africa. I'm an African actually. Amen. And I tell you, I'm proud of it. You know what I asked the Lord? I asked the Lord that one day when we enter the new Jerusalem, I want to walk through the pearly gate under the African flag. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and you know, I keep on saying this all the time, and I feel I must also repeat it here because some people are not sure. You know what I tell the people? I say to them, Look, whoever you are, you're looking so sweet and so wonderful, but one thing is sure your church cannot save you. And I've got worse news. Even my church cannot save you. And it's even worse news. No church can save us. Although the church has got its own wonderful function, it was never meant to save people. And then I say, I want to tell you why no church saves us. Simply because no church died for us. No pastor died for you. That's why no pastor can save you. No pope died for you. That's why no pope can save you. No bishop died for you. That's why no bishop can save you. But I want to tell you who died for you personally. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus, his name is Jesus. Hence, only Jesus saves. Period. Give him a hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That woman at the well of Jacob, she knew that she was confronted with the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, the Savior of her soul. She all of a sudden knew it and she cashed in on it. Amen. She made use of it. I want to tell you one thing. Jesus is pulling the plugs in all our lives. For the poison of sin to be drained. But this is the fact you can only do it. Jesus can only pull the plugs in our lives. Because when he died on the cross of Calvary, he emptied all our sin and all our sicknesses, all our fears, all our bondages onto himself. Jesus died for us, the just for the unjust, the holy one, the spotless one, the sinless one died for us sinners. And because he died for our sins, that's why he wants to set us free from our sins. And as that woman had her offer then, you are having your offer now. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. That woman knew that something had happened. Jesus had touched the heart of the matter. He knew her secrets. He knew her sins. He knew the whole story. And she knew this can only be the Messiah. This can only be the Son of God. And what did she do? She accepted that living water of salvation. Glory to God in the highest. What happened? 
She ran into Sychar, into the town where she lived. And this is what she cried to all the inhabitants of Sychar. Come and see, I have found him. I have found him. He told me the truth. I have received his word. I have received salvation. I found him. Come and see. And I want you to know that I stand here as someone who also found. And I say to you, come, come, come to Jesus. He loves you so much. Amen. You know, in verse 28, it says something here that touched my heart just today. Listen to this. It says here, and the woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city and said to the men, come and see. I've been praying this whole day that when this meeting is over, a host of people will leave their water pots behind. And they will say, I no more need all these aids I had. I have found the fountain of life. I found the water of life. I know that I know that I know I'm free from all the poison of sin. My depression is lifted. My fears are canceled. My sins are forgiven. This is what it means to forget one's water pot. Somebody may forget his water pot. Somebody else may forget to smoke his pot. Isn't that true? You will forget to smoke your pot. Amen. You will forget to take your drugs. You will forget to smoke your cigarettes. You will forget to be. Amen. You know what I mean? You have the answer yourself. She forgot the water pot. Oh my goodness. If ever you visit Israel, go to the well of Jacob. Look around. Maybe it's still standing somewhere there. No, it may not stand there anymore. But one thing I know, throughout the generations, people left their water pots. They left their old sinful lives. And they started a new life with Jesus. A wonderful, wonderful new life with Jesus. I challenge you in the name of Jesus. Let him pull the plug. That all the filth can flow out. And that he can fill you with living water when peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul hallelujah amen let's give a hand for Jesus I see you can't restrain yourself amen Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit is speaking to my heart. I want to speak to backsliders for a moment. Or to those 50-50 Christians. Do you know what I mean by 50-50? I once met a man, he said to me, very sincere. He said to me, preacher, I'm a Christian from, from my head, he said, to the belt of my trousers, I'm a Christian. And downward from my belt to the sole of my feet, I'm a sinner. Have you ever heard such nonsense? Hey! I said, mister, what do you think is going to happen when Jesus comes? Do you think he's going to send the angels with a saw? Cutting you right here? Half heaven, half hell? They 
There is no such thing. Either you don't belong to Jesus from head to foot or you don't belong to him at all. Amen. Amen. And I challenge you. Come on, let Jesus drain that second half of your life. Let that poison flow out here tonight and receive new life, peace with God, and victory over sin. Amen? I've, I've said that on other occasions, but I quickly want to chip that in. You know these 50-50 Christians. In Germany, we call them submarine Christians. Submarine Christians. I tell you how they function. You want to know? Submarine Christians. They surface Saturday night. They come up from great depths. Look, 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 look. And I tell you, they surface in the middle of the church. And in church, all of a sudden, you hear somebody sing like an angel. You turn around, you wonder whether you have been transferred to the new Jerusalem. They sing like angels. Or somebody starts to pray. And you look around wondering if the Apostle Paul has risen from the dead. They can pray. The whole day. I mean Sunday. And then Sunday midnight, the whole process reverses. And the whole week they are cruising at great depths. If you meet them on Monday at school, they swear. They crack filthy jokes. You would never believe they are Christians. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. The whole thing starts again. Look, 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 look. I challenge you 50-50 Christians. Let Jesus pull the plug on you. Be emptied of all the uncleanness, all the impurities of your life. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse you. Let all the sludge of sin flow out. Jesus died for your sins. And then when you are clean, here tonight, you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And instead of being ashamed to stand up and say, yes, I am a born again Christian. I am a child of God you will speak up and you will say I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone that believes say amen, amen. hallelujah listen we are not here to become more religious we are here because Jesus saves we are not here to play church we are here to experience the present power of God in Jesus Christ. Jesus drains all our sin, all our unrighteousness. He drains all our hate, hate, hate. He drains all our diseases, everything unclean, he drains and he sets us free and he says, if therefore the son of man shall set you free, you are free indeed. 
you are free indeed you are free indeed say amen, amen. hallelujah I was preaching somewhere and at the end of a meeting a lady intercepted me when I was walking to the car very beautifully dressed very expensively dressed she was a beautiful woman all right she came to me and she said could I just speak to you for a minute I said yes what's on your heart I saw tears flowing out of her eyes. She said to me, Preacher, I heard the gospel for the first time in my life. She said, Do you think that Jesus would accept a person like me? I said, Sure, no question. Jesus loves you. Jesus is here to save you. She said to me, Mister, you don't know who I am. I'm a prostitute. I'm an alcoholic. I'm a drug addict. And she wept like a little girl. She said, Will Jesus accept me? I said, Lady, my Jesus left the 99 righteous to go and look for the one lost sheep he leave the whole church of righteous people and he will come after a person like you she received jesus right there and right then and her body and her body that was used for prostitution became a temple for the Holy Spirit that's the difference that's the difference and I'm telling you Jesus is now here so it's not a matter of just asking questions and finding some excuses and just putting up smoke screens come and say Lord Jesus I know that I need your salvation desperately personally or if you say Lord I am a backslider I am a submarine Christian but up from now I want to give my whole life to you pull the plug on me very very gently and he will do it very gently but it will work and you will forget your water pot and you will go home rejoicing for the rest of your days and throughout eternity and you will join hundreds of millions of people all over the world who sing and who say i know yes i know that my redeemer liveth amen let's close our eyes in the presence of god oh i want to thank you dear lord that you are wonderfully, beautifully individual. We all know that we are now on a one-to-one -one basis with you. Lord, you are not here to condemn. You're not here to shame people. You're here to save them. You're here to love them. You are here to break the yoke of sin and Satan and to set them free from whatever they may suffer from or from whatever they may be bound. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are now here seeking and saving those who want to be saved. While all our eyes are closed, I want to ask the question of all questions who's here tonight who wants to say I want Jesus to also forgive my sins I want to receive him as my savior I want to follow Jesus for the rest of my days every day of my life then I want to pray with you and Jesus will answer that prayer now who is here who wants to respond to the love of Jesus you want to receive Jesus as your Savior now you all oh, you are a backslider and you want to slide back to Jesus 
then I want to pray for you now. Just lift your hand wherever you are that I can see and pray with you and pray for you. Just wave your hand wherever you are. I need to see your hand. Respond. Come on, just lift your hand wherever you are. I would like to see you against these sharp lights. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Over there, just lift your hand and wave your hands. Come on, anybody else, just wave your hand. God bless you. God bless you. Over there, sitting on the grass, if you want Jesus to receive him, just wave your hand like this because Jesus loves you no matter who you are. Hallelujah. Shall we all stand, please? Let us sing. There's room at the cross for you. And then those of you who responded to the call of salvation, you lifted your hand or you should have lifted your hand. I would like you to come forward. I want to pray with you right here. Jesus is waiting for you here. Jesus is here to set you free from all the bondage of sin and of Satan. And you will forget your water pot. Come, please come. I love you. It's the greatest privilege for me to pray for you right now don't be shy you are so very very welcome just come from wherever you are there's room at the cross for you Just come, come. There's room at the cross for you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. There's room at the cross for you. Keep on coming. There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. No millions have come. There is still room for. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. They're still coming. We sing it once more. Join those that are coming. You come to Jesus. Come now. There's room at the cross for you. There is room at the cross. a minute the Holy Spirit is speaking to me I hear his voice as clear as a bell I cannot put it together in my mind but I say it nevertheless because I know now the Holy Spirit is speaking to one person individually he is a man who has hardened his heart for the gospel actually. But the Holy Spirit tells me that man has escaped from prison and he's here tonight. He was hurt in his early years 
because he was abused by a family member and that gave him a twist in his life that had hurt him so much that he landed in jail and he broke out and the Lord says to you tonight my Holy Spirit has brought you here and if you surrender your life to me I'm going to turn you into a man of God you shall be a chosen vessel unto me saith the Lord and I will forgive your sins and I will make all things new there's room at the cross for you everybody closes eyes come to Jesus not just this person anybody else come to Jesus I want to pray with you here and I guarantee if you come with an open heart you will come to know the power of God unto salvation and you will go home tonight without your water pot come in Jesus name come forward all eyes are closed I want those to come forward anyone who knows that he needs to come either you have never found Jesus before or you are a backslider come forward in Jesus name come there is room at the cross for you. Come. There's room at the cross for you. Yes, keep on coming. Anyone, whosoever will. Jesus loves you. Jesus calls you. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. We sing it for the last time. Step forward. We love you. Jesus loves you. There's room at the cross for you. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Tell you what the Holy Spirit tells me. I'm going to pray now and in the name of Jesus I break those chains of the fear of man that is holding people back because you know very well that you need to be here at the cross of at the foot of the cross of Christ I will pray come on come on let's pray together in the name of Jesus I break all that satanic bondage that makes people not to respond to the call of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus in particular I break the bondage over the man whom the Lord addressed a few moments ago in the name of Jesus come and receive salvation through the Son of God who loves you with an everlasting love you are now free to come we sing it for the very last time and then we will call upon the name of Jesus come in Jesus name there is room at the cross for you there is room at the cross can see some are still coming just feel free to come don't be shy Jesus loves you Jesus calls you some came because they were sick in body Jesus is going to give you a greater miracle than physical healing he's also saving your soul giving you eternal life in Jesus name
Amen. I wished. I don't want to embarrass anybody. I don't want to expose anybody. But I know in my heart for sure that that what the Holy Spirit said is true. And that man, that man, come and, come and see us at the end of the meeting, maybe behind here personally, privately. But please, I beg you, come. Come. Jesus loves you. Just look at me here in front. What must we do to be saved? Do you really want Jesus to drain you of all the poison of sin and Satan? Hello. Do you want Jesus to set you free? Do you want Jesus to save you? Amen. And he's going to do it right now. Amen. He's going to do it right now. Just let them come through. Let them come through. Don't block the way. You are so welcome. So welcome. What must we do to be saved? The Holy Spirit is moving. I can feel the Holy Spirit is moving. What must we do to be saved? Romans 10, 13 gives us the answer. He who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now we are going to call upon the name of the Lord. And the very Jesus who saved that Samaritan woman is the same Jesus who will save you too. You won't have a second hand salvation. You are going to have a nail pierced hand salvation. The original hand, the hand of Jesus is going to save you now. We are going to call on the name of Jesus in prayer. And you are going to call on the name of Jesus with faith. And that moment, the miracle of salvation will take place. I know it because that's how it happened to me many years ago. I stood then there where you stand now. And I tell you, salvation works. It is real. For time and eternity, it is real. I never dreamt that one day I would stand here with a microphone in my hand and preach the gospel to millions of people. And here may be standing now one who one day will preach the gospel with a similar microphone to more people in the world and lead them unto righteousness. Say amen. Now we're going to call on the name of Jesus for salvation. Close your eyes, everybody. Lift your hands to heaven if you can manage. And now we are going to call on the name of Jesus. I want everybody to repeat this prayer after me. Loud and clear. Sentence for sentence. Let Jesus hear your voice. Cry out to him. And he will meet you this very moment. Let us pray. Say, dear Lord Jesus Christ. Dear Lord Jesus Christ. I am responding to your invitation. I confess my sins to you. I confess my sins to you. Deliver me from all bondages. Deliver me from all bondages. Cleanse my life from all unrighteousness. I am on a sinking ship. But you, but you are my savior i call upon your name, upon your name. Jesus, Christ. jesus christ son of god, son of god. Save, me save me now i put my faith alone in you I renounce all dead religion. I now believe with my heart what I confess with my mouth. Jesus Christ is now my Savior. Jesus has healed my broken heart. 
I am a child of God. I am redeemed. I believe it. I receive it. I confess it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And now, Holy Spirit, I pray that you may do what only you can do. Breathe over and into the, these dear people. Oh, the breath of life is now casting out all death in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I set these people free. In the name of Jesus, I come against all demonic presences. In the name of Jesus, I break all curses over these people. And I release the blessings of God. In the name of Jesus, the curses over your families are broken. And I release the blessings of Jesus Christ over you and your house. In Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord that you have done it in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name say I believe it I am now a child of God my sins are forgiven I have eternal life I will follow Jesus every day of my life in Jesus name Amen Hallelujah water pots will be left behind today Amen 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 Oh glory to God I bless you in Jesus name I bless you all one by one in Jesus name how many of you believe that Jesus Christ has forgiven all your sins now amen I see so many wonderful young people here I love you Jesus loves you God bless you and even the old people grandfathers I'm also a grandfather I love you God bless you amen hallelujah is that wonderful when grandchildren have godly grandfathers and godly grandmothers God bless you now listen before we pray for the sick all of you who have responded to the call of salvation I would like to give you this booklet I've written it it's called now that you are saved as a matter of fact we only use it in Africa but we are using it here for the first time in Europe at large this is a booklet. You're going to receive it from the counselors. They will just speak to you. It's a gift. It's a gift. I'm a bad businessman. It's a gift. All right? And those who gave their hearts to Jesus yesterday, they couldn't, they, they missed about half of the people. Please come also forward to get your booklet now that you are saved so that you can see how to proceed from here because you are now going to be a citizen of the new Jerusalem. We are citizens of the new Jerusalem. Amen? So this is what we do. The counselors are waiting for you, that side and this side. Could I ask you, this side maybe, just to go over there for just a couple of minutes, then you come back and you just move over to that side for a couple of minutes and then you come back and we're going to pray for the sick. And while they are going, we sing, I'm a new creation, okay? Amen. Give them a hand. Please, give them a hand. This day is the day of salvation. I'm a new creation. I'm brand new man. All things have passed away.
This is Eurofest. Eurofest 92. And I will praise you, Lord. Come on, Manji, give it again. Give it a go. And I will praise you, Lord. He's a powerful anointing of the Holy Spirit. He's a powerful anointing of the Holy Spirit. Bonke is not the healer. Jesus is the healer. Amen. Jesus is the healer. The same who pulls the plug on sin, pulls the plug on sickness. And he sets us free from all that what the devil has brought upon people. These immense sufferings. Jesus is here to stop it. And I feel such a powerful anointing here. I'm not going to preach again, but bear with me. I just want to read one little verse. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. This is what the prophet spoke about Jesus. He said, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. I'm glad that the word of God says, surely, not maybe. There are many people, they doubt the ability of God to do the impossible, to heal them of their diseases. I'll tell you one thing, here is no maybe. Here is only surely, 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 surely by his stripes I am healed. I want you to say that to yourself and point to yourself. You just repeat the word of God. Say surely by his stripes I am healed. Say it and point to yourself. Surely. By his stripes I am healed again. Surely by his stripes I am healed. Let's give a hand for Jesus. I tell you what we are going to do now. Everybody who can stand, I want you to stand. And those who can't stand yet, I believe they're going to stand five minutes later. If you came on crutches, expect to walk without them. And the power of God is flowing all over this field. No matter where you are, Jesus will find you. Say amen. Some say, oh, if you would only lay your hand on me, I tell you, he is somebody greater to touch you. His name is Jesus. The same nail pierced hand that saved you is the same hand that will heal you. As an act of faith, put your hand on the sick part of your body. 
Somebody came here with cancerous growths. Those growths will disappear. Somebody who came on crutches will walk without those crutches. I believe people will rise from their wheelchairs. Those back problems from that accident. You had to wear that brace for so long. Jesus is here to heal you. Surely, 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 that saith the Lord, surely. I speak under the anointing of the Spirit of God. Put your hand on the sick part of your body. If you have got more diseases than you have got hands, then just put your hand on your head. And I will ask the Lord to lay his hand on your hand so that his power will flow from head to toe. And everything in between, whether it's high blood pressure, whether it's ulcers of the stomach, somebody's going to be healed from cancer. I hear it clearly in my heart. I expect miracles to take place. And immediately after this prayer, faith is an act. Do something you couldn't do before. And when you know that Jesus has healed you, then stand up and come to the platform. Come to this side. I want to meet you. And I want to bless you. You must give the glory to God. Amen. We don't want to be those of the nine lepers that never returned. You are the one that comes and gives thanks to Jesus. Jesus will be waiting for you. Put your hand on the sick part of your body. And we are going to pray for you now. And then you are going to jump. I believe somebody is going to jump out of the wheelchair. In the name of Jesus. I saw a lady in the wheelchair over there. I've got such a burning desire to pray for her. I can't see her against those sharp lights. But I, believe now, but I believe God is going to heal people in a mighty way now. Come on, let's worship the Lord for a moment. Open your mouth and begin to praise the Lord. Speak in faith. Speak in faith. Just praise the Lord. Don't say maybe. Don't say perhaps. Say surely, Lord. Surely. 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 By your stripes I am healed. Lord Jesus, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, you are the one who opened the blind eyes of Bartimaeus. But we know, we know that we have the Bible not just to know what you did do, but what you do now, what you will do now. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I come against all the afflictions that Satan has laid upon people. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, blind eyes open now. In the name of Jesus, deaf ears, the mouths open now. In the name of Jesus, be healed from your paralysis. In the name of Jesus, twisted limbs straighten, short limbs stretch out. In the name of Jesus, cripples walk now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you heal from all the effects of accidents. Thank you for healing backs, broken backs. Thank you, Lord, for healing broken necks. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing now in Jesus' name. I come against every cancer. Come on, praise the Lord. Keep on praising the Lord. I come against all cancers in the name of Jesus cancer you shall die but the person shall live 
in the name of Jesus I come against tumors and ulcers be healed in Jesus name I come against those growths on the breast in the name of Jesus be healed I come against that heart disease sugar diabetes high blood pressure rheumatism MS arthritis asthma in Jesus name in Jesus name be healed from gout right now be healed from gout in the name of Jesus I thank you Lord that life flows into dead limbs is somebody who has had has a dead leg no feeling in that leg now pins and needles enter that leg in the name of Jesus you are healed rise up and walk in Jesus name Lord I pray that you may lay your hand upon the hands of all those people who laid them onto their own sick bodies oh sweet anointing of the Holy Spirit flow mightily flow mightily flow mightily open your spirit for the Spirit of God and receive now many people are receiving now many people are receiving now some are being slain in the spirit the Spirit of God is moving all over now in Jesus name somebody is healed from allergies allergies I hear the Holy Spirit say allergies be healed from your miserable lousy allergy be healed from eczema in Jesus name the skin disease thank you Lord that you heal from mysterious diseases thank you Lord for, for healing from AIDS be healed from that pest in the name of Jesus you have received new life I set you free from drug addiction in the name of Jesus Karabashilana. come on now praise the Lord for your healing open your mouth and say thank you Lord by your stripes I'm healed and then check yourself check yourself check yourself some are already healed now rise up do something you couldn't do before do something you couldn't do before do something you couldn't do before Jesus is healing all over look for that growth look for that growth look for that growth that frightened you to death look for it it's gone in Jesus name and when you have the evidence of your healing or you were healed yesterday and you know that now for sure I want you to come forward to this side of the platform your right side my left side come here I just want to shake your hand and bless you Jesus is moving all over Jesus is moving how many of you can sense the healing power of Jesus how many of you can feel the healing power of Jesus stand up walk in Jesus name move in Jesus name walk without your sticks walk without your crutches walk in Jesus name walk in Jesus name turn to next somebody next to you who is sick just pray for them encourage them come forward those that were healed were you healed are you healed amen Peter where must I send them go there please go there please hallelujah amen let's sing I'm waiting for all those how many of you know that Jesus has healed you yesterday or today just come forward push forward give God the glory be one of those be one of those nine who come and give thanks to God I don't think you understand what I say please move over there to that side move over there to that side hallelujah Benji please let's sing and rejoice Go to Peter. 
Sing it again. I need somebody there to tell the people. That he left me. I am the Lord, your It's okay, don't, I will go down and pray for them. I am the Lord, that he left me. I am the Lord, your healer. I said, I I am the Lord, your healer. Those that are healed, come over to this side, please. Those that are healed, come over to this side. Don't lie up here. Come over to that side. I am the Lord, your healer. I spoke. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What happened to you, lady? What? What? Tell us what was wrong with you. I've had rheumatic, rheumatic bronchitis and asthma. And I felt annoyed that I have been cured clear and I'll go away from here and I will be recovered from everything. How long were you sick? Uh, well, about 12 years altogether. 12 years? Yes. yes. What happened to you now? Well, I feel much different since I've been sitting in an open air show for the first time in my life. I've really enjoyed and it's given me the courage in happening and I feel a different person altogether. Is that a miracle? Is that a miracle? Yes. How did you come to this service? Uh, by coach. By coach? Yes. Now, can you give us a demonstration of... of... <laughs> Hallelujah! Well, something has happened here, and she sh is shining like the sun. Is there anybody who knows you, who knows the... Yes, I've come with a coach from Lowell uh, Emmanuel Fellowship. Emmanuel Fellowship. People do... Can, can you see a difference from Emmanuel Fellowship? Can you see a difference? Shout amen if you can see a difference. Here are plenty of witnesses. Close your eyes, the power of God is on you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you have healed her. Twelve years she suffered. And now, Lord, you have healed her. By your stripes she is healed. In the name of Jesus. And I thank you, the power of God is on her. Look at this, the power of God is on her. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Next one, please. Who's the next one? Come here, come here. I'll tell you, Jesus hasn't stopped healing. Jesus is still healing. He's not just healing for a second. And then those were lucky and the others were unlucky. Jesus is the healer. He's not limited by minutes. He's unlimited. Say, Jesus is unlimited. By his stripes, I receive my healing. What happened to you? I've just been healed of a kidney infection. From what? A kidney infection. How do you know? I believe in God did it through Jesus Christ. No, but I mean, what makes you know? What makes you know? It doesn't hurt anymore. I can touch them. I can... You came with pain? I came with pain, yes. And now no pain? No pain. How long have you suffered from this? Since I was about five. 
How many years is that now? I'm 32 now. <laughs> oh my. Oh, 27 years. Pains in the kidneys. Is that a miracle? She will go back to her doctor. And the doctor will check her out. And I tell you what Jesus has done is well done. We are not running away from doctors. We challenge doctors to see what God is doing. Amen. Hallelujah. We want the genuine things that Jesus is doing. Here is no gimmick. We want God and only God and nothing but God. Amen. We are rejoicing with you. Close your eyes. The power of God is on her. Open your spirit for the spirit of God. You're going to receive more than healing from a kidney disease. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. There we go in Jesus' name. Sir, come here. What happened to you? I have a lump here, right up my nose. A lump under the nose? Right on my, my gum. On my gum. Right here. How long have you had that lump? About two months, over two months now. What happened now? I go to the dental and he, he, he said he cut it, uh, but it's come up worse. And I couldn't talk good sometimes and it's it gone now. Completely gone? Yes, yeah. Is that wonderful? Is that wonderful? Jesus. Jesus is the surgeon without the scalpel but it's perfect say amen. amen are you happy yes yes very happy and i, I have a whole so i mean a uh, gastric stomach it was pain in me since today and i don't feel it that much you're going to have a big steak tonight and you're going to sleep like a baby amen in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Hey, the power of the Holy Spirit is here. Receive in Jesus' name. Hey, this man has got solid feet. He's still standing. Go in peace in Jesus' name. Your faith has made you whole. Come here. Now listen to this. You won't believe it if you are an unbeliever, but you will believe it if you are a believer. Tell us what was wrong with you. I, I was young and I suffer from epileptic fits. And from since I, I came here yesterday and, yester and then from last night, I just don't think I have the epileptic see any more to take these tablets tell me how many fits did you have a day about two a day what happened since last night have you had no fit I've had no fits <laughs> the only fit she's having is the benefit of the Lord bless the Lord oh my soul and forget not all his benefits we want those fits amen we believe with what's your name Chantel Chantel is crying she's moved if you have got two fits a day and then you have you have a day when you have no fits I tell you you will thank God with tears. This is what Chantel is doing now. I want to pray for her and I want you to stretch your hand out to her. If you believe, if you don't believe, keep your hand down. Don't like unbelieving hands forward. And I'm going to pray for her. And the power of the Holy Spirit will come on her. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for Chantel. And I thank you, Lord. That those fits shall never come back. Fill her with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
That's no fit. That's a blessing. Amen. Amen. November what? No. What? Can you believe this? How many believers are here? Now tell us your story. Um, I couldn't have children, and I went to see Reinhard in, bon uh, Reinhard in Hereford, and um, I'm coming back pregnant now. <laughs> hey! What month was that? That was November. November last year, this lady, this lady attended our meeting in Hereford, and we prayed for God to touch barren wombs. And now she is expecting. Less than 50 50 chance on fertility. And she came off fertility and was immediately pregnant. Say it. Um, um, I was told by um, my doctor that I had a less than 50% chance of conceiving if I was on fertility drugs. And he actually took me off them and I got pregnant straight away. So it really <laughs> was Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I pray that she may now get triplets. <laughs> Don't want it. Twins. She's asking for twins. Lord, I know that you have already created facts which we can't change. But I thank you that you bless this mother-to-be and that you bless her baby and her husband and the whole family. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I tell you, this is what Jesus is doing. God has plenty of humors. If all the doctors say impossible, then Jesus says what's impossible with man is possible with God. Say amen. amen. Come here. What happened to you, young man? For the last 17 years, I've had a stutter, but God's healed me tonight. Oh! Hey! This is wonderful. And this is what the Holy Spirit has done for him. And he's going to preach the gospel without a single stutter. Thank you, Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Lord, I thank you. What's your name? I thank you for Philip. Let him be Philip, an evangelist. In the name of Jesus. And let him preach your word. And fill him afresh with the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. God is in this place. God is in this place. You know, we are praying for notable miracles here. I know Jesus is doing many small miracles, but he's also doing many notable and remarkable miracles. Amen? What was wrong with you? I had a depression for the last six years. You know? I know. Were you on drugs? No, 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 nothing like that. Just, uh, you know, lot How do you know you are healed? Well, just, just feel a bit light now, you know? You know? <laughs> Feeling light. You know? Light, light. Well, that's wonderful. I think Jesus has pulled the plug. Amen. Okay. All fear is gone. And what else did Jesus do? I thought you had mentioned two things. Yeah, chest pain. Okay. Amen. Well, God bless you. Let me pray for you. Close your eyes. The power of God is on you. Father, now in the name of Jesus, let the power of the Holy Spirit flow through this man. In Jesus' name, receive. Of God is flowing. Receive now. And I thank you, Lord, that that depression will never come back, but that He's going to rejoice in the power of your might in Jesus' name. Amen. What happened here? What? Skin problems, eczema. What happened now? It was itching before you prayed, and then it stopped after. She came with eczema on, leg, on legs and on arms that was itching, and now the itching has stopped. 
you can still see some marks but they are going to disappear completely amen great this is a little girl but she has got great faith do you love Jesus yes amen Lord I bless this little girl thank you for the power of God on her life and I thank you that she will be a handmaid of the Lord in Jesus name come on let's rejoice Vanji let's rejoice Vanji in Jesus name here one more come on quickly what now listen to this what happened uh, I had um, I had some I had a, like a little thing you know swollen in my breast and the doctors had said I'd have to go for uh, mammography but I didn't go when I came here and you said that we should uh, touch where we are hurting I just touched the place and I felt like something was pulling me right from inside and it pulled right down on and on and then released and the pain is gone now can you is, have you checked yourself out properly I have I could not touch myself comfortably like this move my hand like that I, hallelujah is that a miracle isn't it you see it's not just that the pain is gone but also the fear is gone that goes with those lumps amen do you know what I'm talking about close your eyes the power of God is already on you and open your spirit for the spirit of God. Lord, you've got something wonderful for this lady in mind. Now, in the name of Jesus, the power of God is on her. Come on, Vanji, let's rejoice. I feel like rejoicing in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus do for you madam well tonight I had um, a groin strain two years ago and a terrible pain from the groin strain and it's just gone and also I came to you four years ago and the Lord healed me of panic attacks I was up on the stage with you four years ago praising Lord for Isn't that wonderful four years ago Jesus healed her from panic attacks and today he healed her of, of, of a two-year disease. Definitely gone. Definitely gone. Definitely gone. Is that wonderful? Huh? You can see without those... I, I, this lady has just been healed. If you look at these glasses, you think it's the bottom of a Coca-Cola bottle. It's true! Can you see clearly now? Come here, shout into the microphone. Come here. Can you see me? Yes! <laughs> the, the, the specialist are telling me one, one time, a long time ago, I was born blind, you know, but I can see now, spiritual and even now I can tell you one thing if you put on those glasses you will see nothing <laughs> and she could see something and now she can see without the, have a look at those glasses here come here come here. have a look at those glasses I mean can you see anything <laughs> no, no nothing at all is that a miracle yeah. I want to lay my hands on this lady the power of God is on her somebody's just stand behind her the power of God is on her 
close your eyes now close your eyes you're going to see nothing for two seconds and then you're going to see heaven open father i thank you in the name of jesus that you have healed her eyes you have healed that birth defect you have healed her eyes in jesus name and it is a perfect healing amen hallelujah amen amen i'm going to pray for you as well close your eyes the power of god is on you father in the name of jesus i thank you that you have healed this lady thoroughly from head to foot in the name of jesus christ the son of god